you, Alex. We, I'm really excited for today. I, when I found out about the potential for this topic and what we could talk about, I was jumping up and down with excitement because this really is something that is so true to my heart and something that I believe in so much as an educator, as a technology specialist, and, and just as a member of our cobblestone community. So welcome tonight. I'm so happy that you are here with us, whether you are joining us because you're here live with us during this event, or whether you're a person that's like, you know what, I want this recording. I want to be able to see this later in my own time to learn. Welcome regardless. And uh, I'm gonna jump in today and just get us started. So this is creating culture and community with Office 365. One of the things to really point out is if you are not yet a user of Office 365 in Microsoft and you are using other platforms, I hope that you can find those connections tonight for how these concepts apply, insert name of platform here. And that's really what we're gonna go through. And so please, just like Alex said, use that q and I'm gonna keep prompting you to use it tonight because it feels like we're really connecting with real people, whether that's just interaction or asking questions in the chat, but don't be shy uh, to say or ask anything regardless of the platform that you're using. So as you'll see here tonight, we have given the link to this presentation in the chat. I do highly recommend you make a copy of it because there are some things that you can click on to follow those links to make them your own, as well as hopefully there's some hands-on practice time while you are participating in our live version of this event, or as well if you're watching the video, you'll be able to pause and try those things out that I'm showing you. So one of the things is just to introduce ourselves, you've already met the amazing Alex. She is just a Microsoft queen and I'm so excited she's here tonight as my wing woman, helping us in the chat answer those questions as well as just sharing links and things like that. Um, my name's Trish Rothy and I am an educational technology consultant and a teacher here in Edmonton, Alberta for Edmonton Catholic Schools. And I have the privilege of working in 96 schools. We are a dual platform division, which is so exciting because we have both Google and Microsoft available to all of our staff and students. And so you're gonna be able to see this beautiful tool set today in Office 365 that we are using to focus on culture and creativity and connection, whether we are in a face-to-face -face or an online environment. Now, I know right now that many of us are connecting today from across Canada, this beautiful land we call home. And I think what's so exciting is that all of us have an opportunity to acknowledge and recognize those footsteps that have walked before for us on this beautiful land. And so I am from the Treaty 6 territory here, a treaty of friendship and peace in Edmonton, Alberta. And I hope that all of us just take a moment to reflect and reconcile with those people that we want to recognize as sharing their home with us before us. So wherever you're from today, uh, I wish to say hi hi is the Cree culture that is present in my community. So today I'm here on behalf of the Cobblestone Collective. Alex and I are so excited to be here as part of this team. And really this is about bringing together those cobblestones to make our learning stronger and really being able to look at extending our professional learning in ways we haven't before. And so we just also wanna say a huge thank you to Microsoft uh, for Education for sponsoring this session so that we can come and show these amazing tools to you uh, to be able to use classroom in the future. And so right now, just looking at our plan today, what are we going to go through? Well, really, we want to explore what are those tools that we can take and use tomorrow with our students in order to enhance that community and learning culture within the Office 365 community. I'm going to be showing you a lot of possibility. So it's not a deep dive into one specific tool. The idea is the awareness of awesome about what each of these tools could do. And if you're just a beginner, you're just starting out, don't worry. Please let us know in the Q&A because we'll give you those resources to help you. And as well, you might want to come back to this presentation later to say, okay, I tried this one thing, it was great, and now I'm ready for the next thing. So don't get overwhelmed if there's too many ideas today. Sometimes we can get very excited in technology because we know there's so much possibility, but just keep coming back to this presentation for more. So we're going to talk about things like collaborative PowerPoints, using whiteboards in ways beyond just 
direct teaching in notes, making some video connections in Flipgrid, being able to look at how we can transform OneNote into some very excited collaborative experiences, looking for some more strategies, connecting through teams, and of course, some fun and games, because with Trisha's here, you know, we're gonna try to have a little bit of fun. So those are our goals today. Now, what will be very helpful to Alex and I is if you feel comfortable, feel free to throw in the Q&A. Just who are you? Who's with us here tonight? What are you teaching? Where are you teaching? Throw that in the Q&A. We'll publish it on over so we can see who's here in our chat, in our room with us as we continue. Now, one of the things that really made me passionate about this particular topic is I always are thinking of our students that aren't connected. And that has always been something of mine, even within our face-to-face -face classrooms. Uh, my entire teaching background has been teaching students at risk, whether those were students who had some pretty significant learning needs or medical needs, or as well as working with students who were in between that school environment, in between incarceration in school, or working in community center programs. And I always think of what I call the hoodie kids. Those kids who walk into our classrooms and they want to put their hoods on and their heads down on the desk. And they're just physically present, but they're not really there. And, you know, that's something that we never really allowed to happen in our face to face classrooms. We would work so hard at bringing children in, at making sure they felt welcome, at making sure they felt connected in that community environment. But what's happened with online learning is we've We've had a bit of this culture of disconnect. It's a bit of that hoodie kid with their head down and their screen in front of them. Because often it's things like cameras off, microphones muted, simply sitting and getting that information and there isn't that connection. And so we do really have to consider the mental health and well-being of our students in these learning environments when they're very isolated. We can't guarantee that they have a caregiver or a teacher with them in order to help enhance that learning environment. We know that we're tired, we're very fatigued of these screens and these isolated assignments. And so we want to think about how can we use these tools that we know and love in ways that really promote connection. Because if we get that connection, we get that culture, we get that excitement, it's not only going to enhance that community of learning, but it's going to enhance that individual learning as well. And so when we can look at some of these Office 365 tools, we know that instead of that isolated child on a screen, we have an opportunity to literally come together. We know about together mode inside of Teams, but to really connect and come together and learn this way. Because not only are we learning this way because we have to, because of COVID, but there's many people that are now making that as an educational choice. I know for myself, I did my entire master's degree in an online environment because that's what worked for me. And so it doesn't have to be isolated or dry or dull. We can use these tools in order to make these connections. And so that's our goal tonight. So if you feel comfortable, we hope you're very active in our Q&A, whether that's asking questions, but also saying, hey, I saw what you showed me there. This is how I have used this, or this is what I think I would do with that idea. So please help out Alex and I as we're proceeding through tonight to just let us know those things because you know what? We're only as strong as all of us together and hearing those ideas from you will be fantastic. So we're gonna kick some things off here. We wanna have a lot of fun in our 40 minutes that we have remaining. And so I'm gonna take us through some of these different concepts. And the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the idea of collaborative PowerPoint. And so I have a little fun with this. I always say, the St. Joe Mama slide share. It's not this idea where we get kids to simply do that classic research information, which is them just, you know, looking up something on Bing or Google and, copying it off of Wikipedia, pasting it onto a slide, and it's a little bit of death by slide share. What we can look at is some collaborative experiences of learning with some really amazing features that are built right directly into PowerPoint. And so what I wanna to talk to you about is how we can insert students inside their work. We can use video, links, audio, all right inside of PowerPoint. 
So on our slide number nine, what you're going to find is a little bit of information for some collaborative PowerPoints. And we're going to jump into those PowerPoints. You can see I have a little one here. I don't know if anybody, I don't know, Alex, if you ever did this, I would save my scholastic dollars of my book orders from my students. And I would get these all about me posters from Scholastic, where at the beginning of the year, we would fill them all out. And it was like these little boxes of like, what's your favorite books? And what's your favorite movies? And what do you want to be when you grow up in some of those different pieces? So Absolutely, I definitely used to do that. Those Did were you? So okay. Yeah, those were the best, like the best way to kick off the beginning of the year. Cut out like things that you liked from magazines and collage yes. them onto there. It, it was great. Yeah, totally. Me too. But we can actually use some digital tools to do this. So what you can see here is I do have uh, a link here. Just so you know, I'm going to give you a link to a folder of all of my creativity resources at the end. Every little picture that you'll see on any one of these slides, they are linked. And so if you're in the desktop version, it's just a control click. You'll be able to follow the link to that slide. Um, or as well, you know, if you're in the browser version, it'll work too. But what I want to show you is how we can start to use these different pieces. So I'm going to minimize this and give you a little bit of some of these examples. So right now, what I want to be able to take you to is actually a service that's called Remove BG. Now, I was a huge Photoshop girl where I would do this for my students in order to help put themselves in their work. Now we can actually have our students do this themselves it's so amazing and it works on any device, whether you're on a Mac, a PC, a Chromebook, a mobile phone, it doesn't matter. But we can actually remove the background of an image in seconds. So I really like students to be able to um, create and put themselves in their work. And you're going to see I have tons of templates. I'll give you of those different examples, but I'm going to go ahead and I just want to be able to open up this little all about us uh, one here. I'm going to didn't have this one quite open, so I will go to it right now. It's going to open all about us. So this instead of having that poster that I would fill it on paper, what's exciting about this particular one is students choose the slide. So we can change the sharing settings of any PowerPoint presentation so anyone with a link can edit. Sometimes that can be the setting of tiers. So make sure you're practicing that with some low stakes activities first, like your favorite food or some of those different things. Um, or when you post that inside of your Microsoft Teams classroom assignments, you can have that so anyone can edit. And what the students are going to do is we talk about choosing the slide, adding your name, changing the background, being able to have audio and video in different pieces. And so when the students go in here, they're going to start to really be able to see, and you can see in our side spaces here, there's some word art that they can click and drag on over onto their slide, some little frames, and they're going to start to create that experience. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to practice removing a background with remove.bg. And so when I go ahead and I want to upload an image, I can choose any image I want here. So I'm going to go look for an image. This is my, my creativity partner in crime, my bestie, Mr. Darren Malte. We make a lot of these templates and ideas together. And so what happens is you're gonna see back when we could still be together, there's us, this was the original. That's how fast that happened. This was a barbecue we were having and all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. And so now students can actually put themselves in their work, just so exciting. I can download that image and save it, but I can actually just right click and copy this image right from here. Now, what I can do is I can start to do something with this, whether that's an album, maybe you want your students to come together and it's like, where would we travel in the world today? Or if we could go back in history, knowing what we know now and change history, how we put ourselves in that scene and what would we say and do in order to make it better? Another thing that we can do here is you can see that I have an interactive reading space. So you can see that I've used Remove BG to have my students, these are my kids, the, the Rofi kids here, where I have them removed with their favorite image. What I can do on here, and if you've made a copy of this presentation, I invite you to do this on slide number 10, is to go ahead and to paste that image you just copied from Remove BG 
and you can put yourselves on a shelf. Right there, you've now got your image. So imagine your students coming together to share their perspectives or to share their understanding or to answer questions or anything. We can do this. Interactive demonstration of learning rooms, anything. And so I've got Darren and I here on this shelf and now I can add a couple more people. So thanks Alex for throwing Remove DG in our Q&A. Anybody out there who's trying this along with us, I hope you are. So please throw that in the chat if you're giving this a try. If you've got that going, we'd love to hear about it. We're going to take this a step further. We're making interactive, collaborative PowerPoints between our students. One of the things that I really love about the installed version of PowerPoint is I have access to a few extra tools that I can do. When I go to my insert menu, one of the things that I can insert is audio. This is a game changer for making a slide interactive. It's not like when we would have, you know, PowerPoint presentations where we're just clicking through slides and it's like background ambient <laughs> music playing. This is about kids being able to click and make some choices. I use this for audio answers, being able to do running records, second language practice, um, musical pieces for those music classes and performance pieces. So when I have my audio, one of the things I can do in the install version of PowerPoint is I can actually record the audio right here. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a name. So I'm gonna just call this Besties and I can start recording. I am so excited about the audio features within PowerPoint because kids can give answers to things. They can also share their understanding, share our reading fluency, I hit stop and okay. What has happened is it's given me a play button that I can push right here. And so we're gonna, I think I'm gonna mix up my sons here. This one, we'll grab this one over here, but it's going to play these different sounds right through our PowerPoint. So I can put that audio right here. And now I'm starting to build that interactive space. Trish, I just also wanted to comment what I think is so fantastic about the way that you set this up um, is this is really speaking to all learners. So you've got those visual learners. You can see their their faces are there. They feel like they're into it. They see the, the title of the book that they're talking about. You make it those students that feel a lot more comfortable writing out their notes at the bottom of that side so they can write out their notes of how they felt about the book. Then you might get the students that find that writing is, is a challenge for them. So then they can just come in and use that audio recording feature and talk to their book versus writing it. So although you're making it interactive and so fun, it's also accessible without even doing anything extra to make that accessibility piece fit in. So I think that's just such a great thing that you're highlighting right here. Oh, I love it, Alex. And I couldn't agree more. Like I will have a slide that's set up even just with questions. And now students are providing audio answers, audio responses. Even if you have the ability to write, I got to say the thing. Talk about what you know. That's so much a deeper demonstration of learning as opposed to just simply being able to write it out. And so, you know, there's lots of scenarios we can do this. I even love it for second language practice, or, you know, if I wanted to remove VG, a picture of like Johnny McDonald, and knowing what we know now about indigenous rights, how could we have approached that within um, the creations of treaties and, and, and laws within Canada? And, you know, I just think there's so much potential. Um, and so you're gonna see at the end, uh, we're gonna give you a whole bunch of extra creativity templates, but this is just one of those examples where kids can collaborate to put together their understanding. Imagine creating a group poster for a concept and each student is putting in their picture within this poster on our slide, talking about their contribution or perspective. So it's really the sky is the limit. I use Remove BG and inserting audio for so many things. I'm gonna show you one last little thing we can do when it comes to inserting an image inside of a PowerPoint um, and being able to make that a link. That's really important too. So in here, when you're putting in your picture, you can choose from this device. You happen to have a something saved. You can choose stock images, but you can also search for some online pictures, which is gonna open up Bing and I could start to look for something. So if I wanted to look like Yertle the Turtle, this was my favorite book. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I loved it so much. I signed it out all year long. I can go ahead and I can insert that image and it's gonna put it 
right here on my page. Oh, and of course, I'm like not looking at it properly when I'm like trying to resolve it. Um, but what I'm going to be able to do is shrink that down, put it on my shelf right here. It does give you the attribution of where you got that from. What I'll sometimes get my students to do is to just take that maybe perhaps off of the actual image and just inserting it in the sticker note so that we can still give that proper attribution when it comes to it. But one of the things that we can do is if I was to go and find, say, a video or a website for something, I wanted it to make it an interactive experience of some of my research. One of the things I could go do is like I could find, you know, Yertle the Turtle and I could go find the book. I didn't realize, did you see Red Hot Chili Peppers pop up? I didn't know they read the book. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I would watch this whole video and make sure that it's appropriate and it's good for kids. But what I can do is I can go ahead and grab that link. And so now inside of my PowerPoint, one of the greatest shortcuts is Control K. And Control K makes anything a link in PowerPoint. So I can link images, I can link text, anything I want, and I can just Control V, paste the link to that YouTube video, and now I have that interactive room experience. So kids can come in and talk about their favorite books, their favorite movies, answers to questions, you name it. And I'm starting to reconnect with faces in my classroom. Now you might have some students like, I don't want to put my picture in. Well, maybe at first it's just their avatar or something else, but when we walk into our face-to-face -face classrooms, we see each other and it's okay to see each other in these spaces too. So I love interactive PowerPoints. We've got lots of links. I have a whole folder for you of some interactive PowerPoints you'll get at the end, but that's just one of those experiences that we can really build that community and that collective understanding. So let us know in the Q&A, what do you think of that? Anybody out there who is joining us tonight, would you use this with your students and how would you use it? Just throw it in the Q&A, we'll publish it on over so that everybody can see it. But it'll be really wonderful to hear from you as to what you would use this type of a use of PowerPoint for. Now, well, I can see I can see using it from from book reports to doing class projects, uh, like any kind of learning, like science projects, art projects. I know that we we're talking about how we used to do like I used to do collages. Imagine like a digital collage where everything that you're linking on the page you've either talked about or linked a video to. Um, I think there's just so many different ways that you could use just simple PowerPoint to get way more collaborative and way more interactive than I think we probably have a tendency to think of as a teacher. We kind of put ourselves in our own little box about how PowerPoint can be used, but just even seeing your screen at the moment, that doesn't look like a PowerPoint that most teachers would present, right? That's what's so exciting. It's like we can have the same level of understanding and the same level of sharing information. But there's no text on my page. This really can be about images and audio and video to enhance that same understanding. So just exciting that we can do this together and being able to share. And just remember in your share settings, of course you can share this so that anyone with a link can edit. That's a great way. I can just go ahead and change that. Anyone with a link can edit. That's one setting you can do. And as well, if you are sharing this in your digital learning platform, such as Microsoft Teams, or if you're using a different learning platform, you can create those assignments with anybody who can be able to add it. All right, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. And uh, I wanna talk about one of my most favorite apps in Office 365, which is the whiteboard. Now, again, this is just such a way that we can transform learning. And I wish I could make Microsoft Whiteboard and Microsoft PowerPoint make a beautiful baby because there's features in each I love <laughs> that I wish they could do all together. Uh, maybe someday if, you know, uh, Alex and I are in charge of the world and we can do that, that would be so great. But what <laughs> I love, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Both being in charge of the world and making uh, these tools do the things we love. Um, what I love is that we, yes, we can use this for simply direct instruction and notes, but boy, can we make this a collaborative experience where we're connecting with one another. And so I really like the idea of using this not only for an interactive experience where students are not just consuming information from the teacher, but they're actually creating and contributing to this environment. 
that I really love to use Microsoft Whiteboard within my Microsoft Teams environment because now I'm able to make sure that when students enter the room, so that virtual meeting space they come into, which often can be just, it's dark, it's black in color, people keep their cameras off, their mics off, it's that equivalent of that hoodie over the head on the desk. If you give students something to do when they're entering the room, that changes the experience. So I like to enter my Microsoft Teams already having my whiteboard displayed with an activity for the students to do. And I even take it up a level, I take it up another notch, I will have music playing. So they enter the room, they hear some music, maybe that's nature sounds or classical music or you know contemporary music. They're hearing things, they're seeing things, it's giving them a reason to connect. One of the things I will point out is that I do prefer the full version of the whiteboard. The full app can do a lot more than just the web version of it can do, specifically when it comes to images. And as you can tell, images are so important to me when it comes to connecting with our students, not only connecting with them, but engaging them in their learning in that visual way. If your students only have access to the web version of this, no problem. Um, it's just gonna change a little bit how they interact. But I just wanna show you a couple examples. Now, bear with me as I'm showing you um, the examples. And I think it's gonna try to make me, I'm gonna have to open my whiteboard again just one more time. Um, because one of the things that it is limited to is when you're sharing within the whiteboard, I can only share it within my organization. So tonight I would love to have invited you into my whiteboard to be able to edit and create and do some things, but it's not set up that way. But this is an example. If I was to go into my one that's called the representing numbers, just look at this beautiful space. What are, I can set up a question. I can provide some images. I can provide some materials, some instructions, and students have all of these tools. So within the Microsoft Whiteboard environment, not only do I want to use it for that traditional, like I'm inking and doing things that I would have done on a whiteboard in my face-to-face -face classroom, I can create these launch pads of learning for not only myself to contribute to, but my students collectively. So you can see, and I'll show you a few of the tips and techniques that I've done to set up this page. So this is an example where I wanted an open-ended question in order to assess my students' understanding of number. So in here, I wanted students to show all the different ways they could represent 425. And so you can see I have not only text on my page, I have sticky notes on my page, I have some images on my page, I have some Canadian money, a ruler, some base 10 blocks. All of these are available within the tool. So how did I do that? Well couple of things. You'll notice if you're using the install version of the whiteboard that you have an image option. I do really love the image option because not only can I go ahead and look at Bing, it's going to do a search for me. So I wanted to go in here and I wanted to be able to find a Canadian penny because that's still currency, isn't it? We'll see if it comes up. I got a penny. Now what I'll be able to do is I can go ahead and I can insert my lovely little picture. And so this is my Canadian penny that I've inserted right from there. Another ways that I can do this, of course, I love being able to insert um, my image. And when I'm using it, the camera is so powerful. Now, because I'm currently using my camera within Teams, it, it is not necessarily maybe going to like what I'm doing here. See if I will switch around and see if I can take my photo. I'm in Teams, it's not liking it but I can take my picture of my work that I'm doing, my analog work that I'm doing, perhaps I'm writing it out, I'm using pencil and paper, and still insert it here within my learning environment. Of course, we know that there's things like I can use my active pen. So when I'm in here with my active pen, students can come in and they can start to ink. And who doesn't love the rainbow ink pen? Alex, this is probably one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love the rainbow pen. If I can write in rainbow, <laughs> I want to do it more. <laughs> and so students can start to come in and they can start to do things where they're starting to maybe write out a little bit of like some standard notation as they're like doing some things. They're just going to come in. And so there's so many fun ways we can do this. As well, I like to turn my little pen off again. 
I can do things like having sticky notes. Fantastic. These little sticky notes you're never going to lose again in your class where you get kids to do sticky notes, you gather them all up and you're like, now what? Well, they're here. And what I use with the sticky note is I actually get my students to include their name, put your name and the concept that you're answering. So then I start to know who is who. One of the really great things you can do with the sticky notes, though, is there's color coding. So I can say, put in a green sticky note for a question you have, put a blue sticky note for something you absolutely know about. Like we can start to do some color tagging and some brainstorming within the Microsoft Whiteboard. Now, how I got a with these images, not only through inserting that lovely image that I did um, within the tool, what you can also do is just remember you can do any standard search of an image. So if I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to again do that um, Canadian penny, when I do an image search, whatever tool that I'm using, of course I can go ahead and I can find that image that I want to be able to do. I can simply copy that image, or of course I could drag it right onto my whiteboard. So whenever we're putting those images in, it's just such a handy way. Now it's in there, I can resize it, and I can give those base images to my students in order to be able to do their work. It just gives them that little bit of something to start off with. Another few features that I love, of course, is that collaboration. So right here, I could invite somebody directly. Now you're going to notice that you need to invite somebody that is from your actual domain. So I could go in here and I can invite my colleague, Christine. Can she edit? That's one way to do that. And that's a great way for your students when they're working within their, um, you know, they're doing some group work. They want to do those different pieces. What I really love is that I can also actually, you know, put in more things. Um, if I don't want to just do just inviting people directly, I can export it, but I can post it to Teams right from here. So if I have a class team that I'm using, right away I can post this on my team. And now every student that's already enrolled in my classroom is able to access this whiteboard and I don't have to individually invite all of them to that, which is a huge teacher time saver when it comes to being able to do this. So that's just something to be able to consider is like I set this up, this did not take me long. And with that kind of infinite whiteboard as I'm you know, zooming out, there's so much space for students to be able to do this. Another piece that I really love about being able to do it is I can format the background. So if you ever need things, like you want some of that graph paper that it seems like kids never have um, to do some graphing, or if you want to be able to do some ruled paper or anything where we really still want to take advantage of ink, that is in here and I can set that background at any time when it comes to my whiteboards. It's like, oh no, let's put in a little bit of this square background. Right here, I've got that. Now, a few other things that I really love is this is fantastic for, say, like a brain dump. So I will have this. I will already be inside my Microsoft team. I'll be sharing my screen. I've got some music playing as my students are entering the room and right away they're going to come in and I'm going to say tell me everything you know about electricity, everything you know about um, climate change, everything you know about uh, place value, like whatever that is, I can have that listed. The students come in, they grab one of those sticky notes, they edit that sticky note, they put their name on it, they put their concept and, and I know they're there. I've given them something to do the minute they've entered the room, because they can see it right here on that shared screen. I can throw it in the chat. That's what I want them to do. If we don't give students a reason to engage, they won't. Trish, I think that's such a good comment. I think that in any meeting, it's easy to kind of just hang back and, you know, not say anything because no one else is saying anything. But if you're getting students to do something within the first 10 to 15 seconds of them being in the, the virtual classroom or even in your regular classroom, you know that you have like an entrance ticket and an exit ticket. Why do we think those exist? It's because to get students engaged with the learning right away. So I love that idea of that virtual brain dump or that virtual in, like enter ticket, exit ticket as a way to get students involved right off the bat with the work, even if it is through that virtual or digital means. I love that idea. Exactly. And, and even if it's just uh, where are you today? You know, a fist to five of what you think of this concept. Um, how are you feeling? What are you having for lunch? Like, it doesn't even always have to be high stakes academic. It can still be just questions that connect. How many people were born outside? Were you born within Canada, outside Canada? Add your name. 
it's we're starting to get to know each other and build that community because we know that we have students that have never met since the beginning of school yet. So how can we make sure we're building those connections? We can also do academic projects like this is a timeline project where I can have um, you know students come in and being able to look at you know uh, here I was looking at women in history in Canada where we can use images and sticky notes. I can even insert documents. That's what's really great is that I can actually insert a PDF, a Word document or a PowerPoint straight to this whiteboard as well. So not only can it be a fun and playful interactive experience, there's really amazing academic content that I can put in here that enhances learning well beyond what I could do within SlideShare alone. And you can see already in this presentation, like I'm just sharing my screen and I'm writing on here and showing you things. This will work in any environment. It's just so handy. If you're using just the um, web version, you won't quite have as much of the functionality, like I said, without the images and things. So even if your students don't have that as a teacher, I definitely recommend using that full install version of Whiteboard. All right, we're having some fun. Hopefully we're trying that. So if you are following along with us, uh, let us know. How would you use Whiteboard with your students? Would you use this for a project? Would you use this for some um, classroom connections? You know, what would you like to be able to, to do with Whiteboard? Put that in there and just uh, let us know and we will publish over those comments so we can learn from each other. We're motoring along. I can't believe how much we've done. I still have lots to be able to show you. Um, but I know for a fact, like who doesn't have Flipgrid fever? Like Alex, when, when Microsoft first brought this into their educational suite, like I know I had a bit of like an excitement attack. I don't know if you were the same, but it's like, what, this is part of it? Well, what I love about Flipgrid, which I'm sure you're going to talk about, is that it's, it's a secure place to share video content. It's not as if we're just asking our students to publish these things to YouTube or somewhere else that may, may, we may want them to put them for us to see them. And what I loved about it is that it automatically creates a space where students can talk to students if we want them to. So it's not just that teacher to student communication. Students can go in, respond to each other and learn from each other, which I'm sure we're going to dive into. So absolutely, I think we all had the Flipgrid fever. And that's the thing I love. And you know, you can take this so far. I know my colleague, Christine McKee, she basically is like, the, I call her the Flipgrid queen because she can do like disco libraries and mixtapes and all the, like everything. But even if you just want to start this where I just want a space for students to put videos, what I love about this is it removes that need for students to be able to like, how do I record? How do I convert it? How do I hand it in? Some of that can be very daunting, especially for our students at home or on multiple devices, and we're not quite sure what they're using or how they're gonna do that. It's free and easy on any device, and the fact that it integrates directly with your Microsoft team so that you can send that flip code, you can send that link, it's very, very safe. Um, I think that's just so exciting. Now, just to give you a tiny little bit of an introduction to it is I wanted to make a space for class community. And so I have a topic called class community. And within that, I can have all of these different types of responses. I have made my particular code public. I chose to because this is not one that I use with real life students. This is one that I use with adults. But also note that any of your videos, you can actually turn on a moderation feature, which means that when the videos are posted, you watch it first as an educator to ensure that there's no inappropriate content or things like that. With my students, I actually let them know that this is how I'm gonna start things off for us. And I sort of release that um, control as students know that expectation. But this is what students would see and right away it's just like you hit record a response and students can sign in. Whether they're joining with Google or Microsoft, however they're doing that, they can simply click on any one of those ones. It'll let them sign into their account and they're going to be able to record that response. Now again, I'm using my camera <laughs> because I'm here within Microsoft Teams, so it's not, you're not going to see that full effect. But a couple of the ones that I want to be able to show you, this is an example of some students who use adult students wanted to do some introductions for a professional learning space that we were in. And you can see that you can have a lot of fun with stickers. You can do this on your phone. You can do this anywhere. I could click on any one of these responses. 
and I would have that 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 I would see them. I can see faces. I can hear voices. I know what they're doing. It really changes simply seeing answers. And what's really fantastic about this is I can actually directly include all of this within my team. So on here, one of the things you're going to see, I'm just going to go back on over to my introductions. Within my team classroom that I have here, what I was able to do is I'm actually able to include as a tab on my team, there's class community. So it actually integrates right directly in this learning environment. So kids aren't even having to go outside of this. I can post everything, have that as part of my Microsoft Team Classroom, and now students aren't even having to navigate. They can come on down here, they can record a response, I can have those different topics, I'm looking to see everything from here. So, you know, it's one of those things where video, you know, the world learns by video. If you've learned anything from TikTok and YouTube and Reels and all of these pieces, is having those moments where we could really see and hear each other. And so even if you're just using this as a way for kids to do uh, a Monday morning welcome, like, hey everybody, how was your weekend? We can't overlook the need for social responses as much as academic responses when it comes to kids connecting, especially if they're 100% reliant on that online learning. So just definitely think about you know, looking at that, there's so many amazing resources to get started with Flipgrid, you know, but it is as simple as signing in and being able to create your first grid, your first topic, and being able to share that with your students. So we're gonna keep going. We've got our last 15 minutes left, and I've got kind of three more ideas I wanna be able to show you in this. But I cannot say enough how much I love OneNote. So OneNote, it's like the last binder you'll ever have or need. It's unlimited, it's organized, it can be my personal learning experience with individual pages, especially for that summative understanding. But we can have collaboration and connection within our OneNote notebooks. Now, one of the things that I did is I did two different projects with students that I just absolutely fell in love with. And one, I called it Build a Better. So the idea is build a better, I started with textbook. As we know, first of all, there's many subject areas we don't have textbooks for. We don't have enough textbooks for. They're outdated. Uh, they're not digital. Like you name it, we're struggling with textbooks. So one of the things I worked on with students is how do we build a better textbook? As we're learning about this concept, how could we create a learning space that not only had print and images, but how could we make it interactive with video and audio and ink and other things? And we know that OneNote allows us to do that. So that was one project. And then I'll talk about book snaps in just a second. If you haven't seen book snaps yet, you're probably going to fall in love because it's such an amazing way to connect with print. So first of all, one of the things that to point out is that I actually set up my class notebook within my Microsoft team and you get that class notebook and it will take you through that initial introduction where you're going to be able to see you can have student notebooks, you can have a content library, but you can have a collaboration space. That can be a space where your entire class is able to collaborate and connect. Or you can also make those specific spaces. I could be like, oh, actually, I'm going to put Alex and, and Trish and Michelle. You're in a group and you're the only ones who can edit that page. What's fantastic about it is they can start to build those things. So I made a collaboration space within my notebook and I even put in topic C of my science program, being able to build a better textbook for building and testing materials that move. And so here I wanted to talk about simple forces to power or propel a device. And I'm inviting students to not only have a written concept, um, but being able to put in a video, having images and audio. So as students would go and choose a particular topic, we can see here how they're starting to build their understanding. So yes, we can have some summary, we can have some text on the page but we were able to insert some videos. Now, just to make sure a little bit bigger, I'm just gonna pop on over to the, the exact same thing, just within uh, my OneNote on my desktop. And on here, some things you'll see is I was able to put in a video, 
so that can play. I can have my video going. Kids can learn from that. I was able to have some audio, so kids be able to play my audio, hear those audio clips of them. I wanted them to do audio captions as opposed to written captions. Tell me about the photo that I'm seeing. What does that really mean? And so they found those photos. And then I even had them include a five question quiz using Microsoft Forms in order to make that. So if I was to flip on over to another one of these topics, one of the things to just point out is how fantastic the insert menu is when it comes to OneNote. Because in here, if I wanna talk about downhill motion, right away, I can go ahead and I can look at pictures. And again, I can do from a file, I can use my camera, but being able to use that online search is so fantastic. And so I could go ahead and I could search downhill motion. Do a little search and it's going to find something okay like mountain biking absolutely that's like a huge one being able to go downhill but i could go ahead and find something that is you know looking at that downhill motion i could even say water or maybe i'll look at um i don't get cranky so that might be a little bit easier as i'm trying to find some things i can find my image and right there it's on my page I can also go ahead and I can insert an online video so I could find that YouTube video and paste that link right in here to have it on the page, as well as that audio recorder built right in. So I can go ahead, it's recording me right now. I see this lovely little countdown. I can pause, but I can stop. And of course, when I stop, it's got this audio recording that's already sitting there for me. And I can go ahead and I can just put that wherever I want right in my notebook, which I think is just so great in order to create that. And then as well, being able to look at this, the fact that you can insert a form so kids can have interactive ways. It's not just, again, a consumption of information, but we can actually have people using these notebooks, being able to interact with it and give their understanding as well. Having kids create a quiz based on the understanding on their page for others to fill out is so, so great. So that's one of the things I really love. I just think there's so much that we can do with making textbooks more relevant for students where they're not just grabbing that information and consuming it. Um, I think that's so, just so exciting. Another one that I love, I don't know if anybody out there has heard of book snaps. I'm a bit of a book snap maniac um, because it just allows students to really want them to interact with their text um, without necessarily having to only just give that boring traditional written response. So I found book snaps on Twitter and there's lots of different tools you can use to create a book snap, but I just started to think of, whoa, this was made for OneNote. And so when I look at it, the idea is you take a picture of your book and then you can use inking and you can use text and you can use images to really share your understanding of that book. And so here I have an assignment for students when they're in some collaborative novel study groups. And so here, they're going to be able to take a picture from their novel, maybe from that week or that period of time. They're going to be able to use stickers and ink and audio to reflect on it. So this one, I have a book called Once Upon a Time Online. It's about online digital safety. I took a picture of that. I was able to use my rainbow pen that I love and some stickers. And I was able to create this right here. So if I was to be able to show you this just in a really kind of little snap of how easy this is, I know I call this the giver. I'm trying to think of what books I have here um, in front of me. Right now I have, I'm just very excited to read Ready Player Two. This is my new nerdy book that I'm so excited about. So I'm gonna give this a, a Ready Player Two. I just read um, Little Fires Everywhere. I know it's like a big series, but I had never read the books. So I read the book, I just finished it yesterday. It was fantastic. I love it, I love it. So right here, one of the things to remember is that from camera. So it's gonna pull open my camera. Now, you have to keep in mind, I'm using a camera right now because of our wonderful team event. And so I would have taken a picture of my book and I would put that right in there. It's not letting me use my camera right now. But again, one of the things that I can put in here is I can suddenly, I can draw. So I can pull out that rainbow pen or whatever it is that I'm doing. I can you know, grab that I wanna be able to circle here. And so I'm gonna say, okay, no, I wanna be able to start to ink around here and I want to draw some 
arrows to this. I want to put in some stickers. I know within here what I want to insert. I love the stickers. They can seem like, whoa, are we still using these stickers? Like, I don't want to say nice, welcome, well done. Well, guess what? I can change it. I can say, I connect to this. And why? And so now my sticker is actually very much a, oh, I still got my pen active. It's very much a learning sticker because I have this here, um, you know, for my students. So just so many great things that we can do within this environment by kids having stickers and ink and in bringing the real life into this collaborative space. So yes, we have kids at home with their books that are reading it, paper books, but I can open up that paper book take a picture, draw around it, make connections. I can even, of course, remember, I could take it another step further and I could insert audio talking about that connection, why I feel that way, why I chose that thing. So give that a try. If you just give a little Google or a Bing to book snaps, you're gonna find tons of examples of it. But I even think book snaps for textbooks novels, magazines, however we want to connect with print in such a visual way. But now you have that, that, that capturing of that learning moment because it's in one note. Now I can add another one and another one and another one because I can just keep scrolling down my page and adding more. So let us know in the Q&A how you're doing. Would you use book snaps or create a better textbook or anything like that? Throw that in there. Let us know how you're doing. I know we've got lots more that we're going to cover in this short amount of time, but just to give you some of those ideas. That's awesome, Trish. That's seriously such a cool way of taking something that's physical, then making it digital, and then enhancing it in that digital space. Really I'm like, I didn't invent that. Book snaps is not me. I saw it on <laughs> Twitter, but I just thought, like OneNote has everything I need to do that. Free, easy, any device, like kids can do this. And I'm not having to collect paper. I have to say, even without online learning, I, you know, I would do that. Yeah, and think if you wanted to like pull your Bitmoji into there and have the person talking about the book and like the third person, you could do so Got much it. with it. All right, we're gonna keep going with a couple of more things that we know we're wrapping up here in five minutes, but we just wanna give you some more goodies. One of the things we really want to talk about is how video meetings are more than direct instruction. So I have a little, I, you know, I work for a Catholic school board where I'm from, so I always kind of joke it's the gospel according to Trish, so take it as you will. You don't have to disagree. But there are ways that teams can absolutely enhance your learning experience more than just kids coming into a dark space and, and, and sitting quietly with their cameras off. My number one rule is cameras on. You can't enter my room with your hood over your head. I know that there's different experiences of privacy. So whatever your division's privacy rules are set up as, like if, you, if you're not allowed to have cameras on and things, I completely understand and respect that. But otherwise, at least at some point, even as your kids enter the room, one moment, cameras on, say hello, connect with them. My other advice for you is screenshots are your friend. Microsoft Teams is really one of those only environments that allows us to take a screenshot and put it in the chat. So instead of having kids switching back and forth and who's presenting, who's not presenting, we'll be working on making something like one of those virtual rooms or a whiteboard they're working on. And I'll say, great, screenshot that, throw it in the chat. What did you accomplish? Let's see what everybody made. It's so great. So I've included some shortcuts there, whether you're working on a PC or a Mac or a Chromebook, take those screenshots, getting kids to do those. Do students have something to do when they enter the room? So it's not a quiet, dark space. Is there an activity? Is there a reason for engagement? And considering those ideas. Right here, again, Matt Miller and Holly Clark, so fantastic. They've put together 20 ideas for using video meetings with students within Microsoft Teams. We do have a link there for you on slide number 14 that you can go to that will take you to all of those ideas. Um, where you can just say, okay, this is great. Not only how to use Teams, if you're new to using that, I think it's exciting, but those 20 ideas, whole group instruction is just one. But could you do things where a virtual field trip or hot or cold or a debate or a class check-in, um, presentations, read-alouds, doodling together, 
however we can connect with our kids there's so many possibilities and app smashing that where maybe we have an interactive powerpoint that they're all working on or we have a whiteboard that we've got kids putting on some sticky notes and brainstorming my big thing is don't let microsoft teams be this one-sided environment you know it's literally even color dark it's black in its color when we're going to it so let's turn the lights back on of learning and making sure that our students have that opportunity to do something with their teams and we want to wrap up today with fun and games there are so many ways that you can have learning and demonstration of learning and skills and practice be fun. So I've included a couple of templates that I've made. One is called Django Learning and one is Shoots and Ladders. You really can have quite a bit of fun. We know that we have to do some skill practice, but imagine being able to assign in your team, being able to go to some two-digit and three-digit edition where kids are now able to pull a, pull a block so I can pull this off to the side, build my tower, and we're working together coming up with some of these answers. And so whether this is for second languages or for math or for I can statements or whatever that is, we can use these PowerPoint templates to have a lot of fun. And so I'm gonna be giving you a whole bunch of these ones that you can use the ones that I've made. But if you are not a slides maniac yet, you will be after tonight. Paula is amazing. She has so many slide templates that are available for PowerPoint or Google Slides. And so I can go in here and there's unboxing ideas. Um, I can search up at the top if I want to look at actual choice boards. So kids can go in and do choice boards and games. What's going to be great about that is it's like building a tower, true or false, a treasure hunt, a board game. Look at all of these ones that I could do. As soon as I find one that I'm really excited about, I can click on any one of these and see the template. But right away, I can download that in PowerPoint. And simply using some things that we've shown you tonight, like imagine you remove VG, control K to make links, putting in audio, where we can take learning through these very fun templates is so unbelievably amazing. So just think out outside of traditional slide share when it comes to connecting students and creating that culture, especially when it comes to those knowledge and skills and practice. I don't have to do that in that study isolation. I'm better to connect. I want to be able to play a little bit of shoots and ladders with Alex as we're practicing our second language facts. I need to practice my French and I know she's so good. And so we would be able to have that, those concepts and play together. To wrap up tonight, we just want to say a huge thank you for joining us. We know that we spend a lot of time online, as many of us are still teaching online across Canada. And so your commitment to education for students is just so absolutely unbelievable. Um, we encourage you, if you want to be a Microsoft certified educator, we do have the code here for you to be able to earn those credits as you're trying to achieve those credentials. So definitely taking advantage of that and putting in that code as well as I do have a folder full of creative PowerPoint templates. If you're trying to use TikTok with your students, Instagram, game boards, postcards, interactives, I have a whole folder of things that are Microsoft friendly that you'll be able to click and make some copies of. And finally, just a huge thank you. We love doing this. I know Alex and I uh, get a little geeky when it comes to being able to use Microsoft tools in ways that were never available to us when we were younger. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> but we want to know how we can continue to do more, to do better for you. So please, please give your feedback. Uh, there's a link to a bit of a feedback form there letting us know how we did. And as well, after today, if you're still struggling with something, you have a question, please don't help at cobblestonecollective.ca. They really mean it. They really will find you the answer or the resource that you need. Um, so definitely sending that email will not hurt. But thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for watching the recording if you're not seeing this live. And a huge thank you to Alex in the chat. She's given us all those links and keeping everything rolling for us tonight. Uh, it has been a lot of fun. So thank you very much.